Okay, so um, we're recording, yeah? Yes. Okay, great. So first thing is go ahead and just state your name and spell it. Okay, hi, I'm Dr. Ellie Zarabian. That's Ellie, E-L-L-I-E, -L -L -E, last name Zarabian, Z-A-R-R-A-B-I-A-N. Great, and what is your title? I'm the founder and the spiritual director of the Centerpiece Foundation. It's a center for mindful living and working. Excellent. And um, you're speaking to me from what city? From Los Angeles, California. Perfect. Okay. So today we're going to talk about mental health in isolation. And um, in times of a pandemic, people are being forced to literally stay in their homes. And for some people, that means with their families. And for other people, that means all alone. Is there one number one piece of advice that you might um, prescribe or sort of um, give instruction about relating to ways to keep ourselves sane during this time? Yeah, I think the most um, important piece of advice I, I would give is to um, look at our situation not as necessarily as just temporary because that changes how we look at time. Rather, if we look at this more as a new normal, as though this is the way it's just gonna be for however long. And I need to shift my way of thinking and being and living as I have known it before. So everything that I plan when I wake up in the morning, I have to think of it as this is my life now. So how, what do I need to do? I need to work, I need to still exercise, I still need to socialize, I still need to maintain connection with um, my family, community, etc. It's just that the platform is different now, the medium of doing that is different. Rather than thinking, oh, this is a temporary thing, let me just bear this in time, and then I'm gonna go back to living my normal life in uh, two weeks or three weeks or a month. I would say that's the main um, shift in thinking that would really help people. Great, so um, for some people, when they hear that, they might think that sounds like a really huge undertaking. Like, it's actually mentally, like, it seems easier if I just know this is only temporarily and I can go back to my life when it's over. Why do you recommend shifting the paradigm? Right, because the reality of it, of it is that we don't know how long this is gonna go on, okay? Um, we don't really know if this is gonna be for another few weeks, months, or even longer in terms of getting back to how things were. We don't know, and we don't know if we're ever gonna go back to exactly how things were before. So to, to hold on to the old thinking of, oh, this is just temporary, in fact, sets us up in some, some ways for great disappointment. And also it shifts the time in a way that puts us in a waiting mode. And you can only wait for so long. I mean, how, how long can you keep waiting? A day, two days, two weeks? At some point you're gonna get mentally exhausted and um, you start um, getting depressed and not know when is this gonna end and can't wait. And so all, all those things, all those fears and feelings start kicking in. But if you, if you shift the thinking to, oh, this is a new paradigm, I can still continue my life as before, I just have to change the platform. It completely shifts the way you think and feel day to day. Beautiful. For a lot of people, it's this is really sort of agony. Like yes. It's a really painful thing to not be able to have human connection. What what are some practical tips for people who are feeling just like agonizingly alone? Right. So um, we are social animals, so we have to have social contact. Um, again, it's not stopping us from having contact, just the medium is different now. So rather than me going to my gym in the morning and seeing my friends at the gym and saying hi and socializing with them, 
I now get together with them online and we still have our usual regular um, yoga class and then we socialize online. So I'm still getting what I, what I need met. It's just a different platform. The other thing that I, that I do now is that I really want to focus on the importance of here and now, which is if you go outside for a few minutes to just walk around your neighborhood, because I, I know people do that just to maintain some level of sanity, even though you're supposed to just stay completely at home. Um, when you see people, even if they're wearing masks uh, or if they're not, really look into their eyes and acknowledge them and let them see you and absorb the connection, even in passing. It may sound small or seem not, it's trivial or doesn't really make sense but when you can really connect eye to eye and in some uh, ways heart to heart even in a brief instant it can really satisfy that need for connection and being seen by another um, and if you're not going outside at all which is completely fine and that's the way it's supposed to be um, you do that online uh, when you're connecting with friends and family you look you look at them directly and try to make a heart-to-heart -heart connection and get some of the needs for um, connection met at that level consciously thank you and what about for the people who are experiencing the opposite effect which is they're stuck in their homes and their families are driving them nuts what is your advice for how, for coping with the the uh, suffocating feelings that some people are feeling? Well, you mean if their families are at home, if everyone's living together? Yeah, like yes. I've had friends tell me like, oh my gosh, like I normally have time alone, but now we're all cramped in the house together 24-7 and it's yes. driving me insane. Yes. So, um the concept of personal space becomes really important and um, compromising personal space. So for example, there's, let's just say it's a one bedroom apartment. Um, then you have uh, space alone time uh, in the bedroom and everyone can take alone time. So, you know, from nine to 10, I'll be in the bedroom for an hour taking some space. And then from 11 to 12, my spouse will have some alone time and we'll go in there and close the door. So negotiating and compromising personal space becomes really, really important. Um, and when you're in the room by yourself, you get to do whatever you like that feeds your heart and soul. If you want to listen to music, if you want to play video games, if you want to talk to a friend, etc. But it's absolutely your time. They can't come in, go in and out, they can't knock on the door. They just leave you alone as you do the same for them. Thank you. And in a more general sense, um, we're experiencing a collective anxiety. We're in, we're in a time of crisis with people dying, people are sick, our loved ones are sick and dying. and there's a sense of hopelessness and lack of control for a lot of people out there. How do we cope with that sadness, that anxiety? Right, so that's a really big question you're asking and I'm glad you're asking that because we are going to see this escalate um, a lot more as people begin to uh, lose loved ones um, or know of people who are struggling and at some point may pass on. Um, and so it's, um, again, it's that radical acceptance of what's happening, uh, in our lives currently. Mm. It's like, for example, if someone close to you, God forbid, has cancer or, um, has some terminal illness and you prepare and you have to mentally, uh, psychologically prepare for the inevitable. And um, if that's where you're needing to go, that's where you're needing to go. And having the most amount of support during that time is crucial. So whether you have 
people close to you who can hold that space for you as you're going through it. If not, if you have a trusted um, therapist or a pastor, someone who can hold that space becomes very, very crucial. How would you describe what it is that we're feeling collectively? Well, you know, I um, am a child survivor of war. When I was very young, I went through the Iran-Iraq revolution and um, a peaceful country practically overnight went into a state of chaos and war. And um, I would say it's very similar to what's happening here. It's like one minute you're living a comfortable life, everything is normal, you're going about your day-to-day -day very comfortably, and all of a sudden, practically overnight, your life changes. And you, your life is not the same as it ever was before. And you quickly have to adjust, you quickly have to adapt to this new way of um, being. And of course, with that comes a whole host of feelings that you have to deal with, which often puts you in a, a state of overwhelm. Um, that sense of safety is gone. Um, a sense of belonging and community is shifting. Uh, you, the uncertainty about your future, not knowing where you're going to end up. Uh, uncertainty about the uh, welfare and well-being of your family and loved ones. So I see it as very similar to that. And because I personally have been through it once, um, in a way I have, I've had more preparation than most people here in the US who've never been through that kind of a catastrophe. So uh, what's important is that you build resilience, that you build the ability to cope with things as they keep changing every day. And one way to do that, with what I said at the beginning of our conversation is that you have to adopt a new normal. You can't think of your life as, oh, this is just temporary, I'll go back to it. That actually sets you up for all the things that you don't want to happen to you, just depression, anxiety, fear, all that. But if you think of it as, oh, this is a new way that I'm going to coexist now and I have to turn to all my resources, inner and outer resources, to make it through this, then I will. I will survive. I'm a survivor. And then you gain the, 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 the resilience that you need, you'll gain the coping skills that you'll need to help you move through uh, that period as long as it will last. So in a way, you're really priming yourself, you're helping yourself to kind of gear up to enter into something that you before you didn't think was even possible, that you could even do, but then you can because every day you will forge through it and you will see that you can do it. As hard as it gets, you'll make it. And that will become more of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You believe that you can do it. You believe that you will develop the skills and, the, and have the resources, and then you will do it. Um, as opposed to the other way of thinking, which is, I can't handle this, I can't deal with this, this is terrible, I'm blah, 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 blah. And that then puts you in a place where you become very vulnerable um, to a host of problems, which you don't want to get into, or hopefully you can avoid. For many of us, it's the first time they're ever feeling, we're ever feeling um, this deep, discomfort yes. and it's easy to want to run because we want to be we oftentimes will distract ourselves with getting super super busy with life but we're not able to do that now so what do you it is that normal and if so um what's your what's the process of dealing with it so we talked i talked a little bit about the process of building resilience and developing better coping skills the other thing is that, again, on some level, life doesn't stop. You still have to work. You still have to make money as best as you can. You still have to pay the bills as best as you can. You still have to go buy food. Um, and you're still a creative human being. And creativity can become uh, one of your greatest allies during times of crisis. Um, tap into your creativity and think of things that you can do or bring or create that can help alleviate some of the suffering in and around you. For example, develop an app or 
develop a chat room or um, come up with certain instructions on how to manage kids at home or how to build in an interesting thing that will help um, doctors. Uh, what, whatever, whatever creative medium or outlet you can tap into can be really, really helpful, not only for you, but for people around you. Um, and it can also become a saving grace because once you are tapped into your creativity, time vanishes. You, get so, you can get so consumed with what you're doing and what you're creating that you lose track of time and what's happening around you. So I would say that's, that's a big thing. If you can calm yourself and your mind enough to tap into um, your creativity, that can be a tremendous resource. Um, that can be really, really helpful. Great, and um, for a lot of people, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of financial fallout. They've lost their millions and millions, have lost their jobs. They don't know where they're, how they're gonna pay the bills, and it's really scary. It's a really scary time. Yes. What would you say to those people? Um, yes, these are tough times, scary times, horrific. Um, uh, on some level, again, I compare this to my own background of having gone through wartime, in some ways very similar. And um, survival kicks in. You have to get creative again and think about how you can uh, survive. So um, calling around, um, creating other options for making money, um, calling institutions, you know, to get loans or um, get more support, um, turning to family members who have money. You just have to get really creative. And then again, day by day think, okay, if this is gonna be the new normal for the next several months, how can I stretch this out? What can I do? And you start thinking towards that direction rather than getting stuck in a place of fear, which again, I know it's easier said, that done, said than done. Um, it's very easy to fall into a place of fear. And that's where, again, it's important to reach out to people who can be of greater support um, if you get stuck in, in, in those places. And how about for the people who are either religious or people of faith? Is this an important time for them to draw upon that? Absolutely. Yes, this is the time. So um, if you have a spiritual practice, definitely want to turn in towards that. Um, I actually encourage people to start meditating, and I know there's a lot of meditation going on, um, people collectively setting a certain time meditating together. Um, if you have um, a prayer ritual, if your pastor or your um, rabbi can meet online and um, set up sermons online. It's wonderful. It's always very inspirational and hopeful. So definitely turning to a, your spiritual practice or um, tradition can be a great source of support at this time. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you about you know, this time during isolation and in pandemic times that you'd like to include that you think is important to say? Yeah, um, it's important to realize we're in, in this, all of us are in this together. Um, there's not one group responsible for this or uh, there's no one to blame or, you know, um, some, um, it's not like uh, some are suffering and others are not. It's a global thing that's going on right now and we're really in it together um, as a people. Humanity, in fact, is going through this. So um, if that can offer any um, support or sense of connection, I think that would be helpful to think that it's not just you. You're not just the one who's sitting in your home struggling, suffering, but that we're all going through this and we're all going to come through this collectively. We're gonna figure this out and move beyond this. There's always, always hope. 
even in the worst case situations, there's always hope. Well put. Thank you so much. We can stop recording.